CBSE board have a low probability of getting into some of these schools because CBSE ka itna brand recognition nahi hai. Fir bhi hum use appreciate karte hain jiski background thodi si disadvantage thi. That's actually true. I paid no money at all when applying to this uh, when applying to all of these schools as a part of my application process. Uh, unlike India where you have to do an LLB degree before an LLM degree, in the US you can major in practically anything. I'd say very honestly less than 10 So hello everyone today it's an honor to introduce Tanishk he got into University of Pennsylvania jise hum UPenn ya fir Wharton College which is part of UPenn ke naam se jana jata hai and it is one of the Ivy League school aapne shayad kam hi suna hoga that student from CBSC board ya fir state board aise schools mein jate hain such highly ranked school with financial aid and Tanishk has proved to be one of the student there so hi Tanishk can you please introduce yourself Hi Bea. First of all, before I come to my introduction, let me just say this is an absolute fanboy moment for me to be interacting with you today, and I think you we owe you this, you know, on behalf of me and everybody else who's been watching your videos from the beginning. You've been an absolute inspiration for us because coming to the US was not even an option for us until you exposed us to the ins and outs of this process. So before I begin, thank you so much for bringing this whole new world of opportunities to us. Um. Mean coming so. to my introduction uh, hey everybody my name is tanishk and i'm a freshman or a first year student at the university of pennsylvania i am on a pre law track that means i would most likely go to law school after i complete my undergraduate degree and i originally hail from a city called indore madhya pradesh in the state in the in the country of india very nice so let's start with your background so just like any other student coming to the us her हर दूसरे बच्चे की जर्नी स्टार्ट होती है फ्रॉम जेई सो डिड यू आल्सो वांटेड टू गेट इनटू जेई कब आपका प्लान बना टू स्टडी अब्रॉड सो हाउ वाज योर बैकग्राउंड इन हाई स्कूल इन इंडिया या सो Just like most students in India I was also pursuing PCM or physics chemistry mathematics along with IP and English uh, in my 11th and 12th grade and that is when I was really interested in astrophysics for I should say the better part of my life if I wanted to major in astrophysics anywhere you know it, it, be it in India or in the US but after a certain time I I found my real calling and that was pre law you know the, when I started debating when I explored this whole new world of opportunities I realized that there is a new world that's out for me and that is something that I wish to set myself in so uh, as as far as jee is concerned i would say that i was another one of those students that wanted to go to an iit but after some time i realized that this process is far too competitive for me and i i do not see myself as a person who could be evaluated using grades alone so because of the difference in the application process and the uncertainties that are considered with gradings that comes to jee i decided to pursue um, undergraduate education in the us where i feel a more holistic review of my application would be conducted and something that would greatly benefit me in the longer run so currently you are pursuing pre law right yes so first of all doing law in the us is very unheard of or especially a transition of pursuing engineering in india to pursuing law in america so when did you realize ki aapko engineering nahi karni chahiye and you should pursue law so when did you figure out your passion So I would say it's probably because of my personality type in general. Like if I could use three adjectives to describe myself, I'd say I'm a critical, curious and confident person. And because of this critical personality of mine, I got into debating that further got me interested in law. So usually jab hum critical word use karte hain, hum Indians usko kafi negative connotation ke sath dekhte hain. Hum sochte hain critical, shayad argumentative insaan hai, shayad har kisi ki galtiyan nikalta hoga. Lekin aisa nahi tha. In my case, critical for me meant curious. whatever things were happening in the society i wouldn't outrightly deny them but i would question them at every step of the way hum log killer movies dekha karte the detective movies dekha karte the uske shuru ke 5 minute mein hi i could figure out ki kaun killer hota tha aur kaun detective hota tha aisa isliye nahi tha kyunki uh, that information was very difficult to very easy to figure out but because i was paying uh, i was paying attention to hints that most other people were ignoring and that is when i realized ki mere paas ek aisa talent hai ki main uh, चीजों के नुआंसेस को देख सकता हूँ मैं चीजों की सटल 
एक्टिविटीज को देख सकता हूँ आई लाइक आइडेंटिफाइंग फ्लॉज दैट मोस्ट पीपल वुड नॉट बी एबल टू आइडेंटिफाई विद कंसिडरेबल अमाउंट ऑफ एफर्ट एंड दैट इज वन आई रियलाइज दट दिस इज वेर माई ट्रू पैशन लाइज एज फार एज इंजीनियरिंग इज कंसर्न आई रियलाइज दैट दैट इज समथिंग दैट आई ओनली आइडेंटिफाई एज माई हॉबी एंड नॉट रियली एज माई प्रोफेशन एंड दैट आई थिंक इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट चॉइस दैट ऑलमोस्ट ऑल ऑफ अस फेस एट सम पॉइंट इन आर लाइफ लाइक इफ यू वुड एव आज द फोर्थ स्टैंडर्ड मी आई वुड हैव टोल्ड यू दैट आई वॉन्ट टू बिकम अ क्रिकेटर बट दैन इफ यू वुड एव आज द सेवन स्टैंडर्ड मी आई वुड टेल यू दट क्रिकेट इज सिंपली समथिंग दैट आई इंजॉय प्लेइंग बट वुड आई लाइक टू परसू इट एज अ सोर्स ऑफ माई लाइवलीहुड देन माई आंसर चेंज टू नो सो वेन आई मेक दिस फाइन डिस्टिंगशन बिटवीन वॉट इज माई हॉबी and what i would like to qualify as my profession or my source of livelihood that is when i had this paradigm shift in personality and i finally resolved to understand that this is something that i want to pursue as my profession in the future so brilliant perspective and when you said aapki hobby thi engineering so were you exposed to programming in your in your high school or matlab kaise aapko laga ki engineering aap kar sir kar sakte ho so for the most part i would say that the reason why i was so interested in engineering was because of space so as a child i'd watch these a plethora of youtube videos about how fascinating space is and how wide the mysteries about space are i would read i would read hundreds if not thousands of novels and uh, articles that i could come across in space and that is what fascinated me and interested me in learning about the universe so uh, as far as my interest in engineering is concerned i think i'd attribute it to two things the first one would be my interest about the exploration of space and how it serves as a massive mystery for all of us and the second would be credited to as you said programming so i've been exposed to programming since a very young age my school and that is when i realized that how programming is like a genie cogged up in a bottle you can literally use your laptop something that's available to your disposal free of cost to be able to engineer and to be able to understand things that wouldn't be possible without your human mind so because of all of these interests and the availability of these things at my disposal it 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 kind of uh, spurred my interest in engineering but at the same time like i said when i when i distinguished between what i want to pursue as a hobby and as a profession i realized that this is something that i want to continue doing despite uh, what i want to major in the future but at the same time this is something that i did not see myself living and working for so with pre law out of the way hum baad mein baat karenge what are the what is the future of pre law in us but usse pehle i really want to talk about cbsc board so how difficult was it for you coming from cbsc board to get into upen and that al- that also with 100% financial aid jo maine kahi bhi nahi suna majority of the students jinko main baat bhi karta hu they coming from ib board ap exams unhone diye hote hain ya fir they coming from cambridge board jo ki uk ka system hota hai so how did you figure out that with cbsc board background as well you can get it and thode aap numbers bata sakte ho ki cbsc board se probability kitni hoti hai jo log dar jate hain cbsc board have a low probability of getting into some of these schools because cbsc ka itna brand recognition nahi hai usually when it comes to the ib board or to the cambridge board these are boards that are recognized internationally so while the cbsc board has started coming into limelight and more and more people have started to recognize its credibility and the intellect of its students the ib board and the cambridge board were boards that have existed in their in in the, in the part of the process for a very long time historically might i say so i knew since the very beginning that this process was going to be hard for me as a cbsc student but at the same time i thought of how i can use this disadvantage as an advantage so to give you some perspective into what i'm talking about let's imagine that there are two people in in this situation the first person has been uh, brought up in a in a family with a sink with a silver spoon right a family that's been making a truckload of money since the beginning a billionaire family for that matter now if that person goes on to a very prestigious school learns a lot of merits and becomes a multi billionaire in the future what the person has done becomes commendable right we automatically appreciate that this person has achieved a massive feat but at the same time if you look look at a person who's risen isn't from the streets a person who had absolutely no connections at all and that person also becomes a multi billionaire we start to appreciate this person more relative to the first person and why is that even though both of these persons achieved the exact same thing one person was disadvantaged while the other one had a truckload of opportunities at their disposal and that is exactly the philosophy that i had in mind it might be hard for me to surpass so many people who have a truckload of opportunities at their disposal but at the same time if i can achieve what all those people have with the opportunities that i have then i would be able to make a solid case for myself then i would be able to say that hey even though i did not have abc i was able to do xyz and that is why i think uh, even though this was a disadvantage for me i kind of used it to my advantage to prove my competency uh, when it came to admission in upen totally agree aap sahi keh rahe ho agar ek student ke paas kam opportunities ho from from a different educational background but 
अदर स्टूडेंट जिसके पास ज़्यादा अपॉर्चुनिटीज़ हों फ्रॉम अ बेटर एजुकेशनल बैकग्राउंड अगर दोनों सेम पोजीशन में पहुंच जाते हैं सेम जॉब में जैसे दोनों को अगर माइक्रोसॉफ्ट गूगल में जॉब मिल जाती है एंड दोनों सेम प्रमोशन पे आ जाते हैं बट फिर भी हम उसे अप्रिशिएट करते हैं जिसकी बैकग्राउंड थोड़ी सी डिसएडवाटेज थी तो ये परस्पेक्टिव होता है सेम इज़ द सीनैरियो विद सी बोर्ड एज यू सेट तो इसके कारण आप थोड़ा नंबर्स बता सकते हो कि क्या ये रीज़न है दैट दैट द वेस्ट इज़ नॉट अप्रिशिएटिंग सी बी एस ई बोर्ड या फिर वॉट इज़ द रीज़न दैट सी बी एस ई के नंबर्स कम है एज कम्पेयर टू आई बी ए परसेंटेज बता सकते हो हाउ मनी परसेंटेज ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स यू सी विद फाइनेंशियल एड इन द यू एस फ्रॉम सी बी एस ई वर्सेज आई बी और अदर बोर्ड्स आई इट्स ए वेरी ऑनेस्टली लेस दैन टेन परसेंट ऑफ पीपल बिकॉज इवन पीपल हु आर कमिंग फ्रॉम सी बी एस ई बोर्ड इन टू आई वी लीग्स आर यूजली पीपल हु आर फंडिंग द एंटायरिटी ऑफ दर एजुकेशन सो वेन यू आर लुकिंग एट दैट सैम्पल साइज दैट ऑब्वियसली डी क्रीज इट्स द मेजोरिटी ऑफ पीपल हु कमिंग यूर आर फ्रॉम आई वी बोर्ड इन केम्ब्रिज बोर्ड हु आर अफोर्डिंग दर एंटायर एजुकेशन बिलो दैट वुड बी पीपल कमिंग फ्रॉम आई वी बोर्ड इन केम्ब्रिज बोर्ड हु आर रिसीविंग अ सिग्निफिकेंट पोर्शन ऑफ स्कॉलरशिप बिलो दैट वुड बी पीपल फ्रॉम सी बी एस ई बोर्ड दैट आर पेइंग इन फुल एंड दैन at the very bottom of the rung at the very bottom of the ladder would be people from cbse boards that are achieving scholarships and even below that if if if, if situation even exists would be people from cbse boards who are receiving 100% scholarships oh. so to put that into perspective the odds of that happening are astronomically low but at the same time i knew that even though the odds are low they're not non-existent so i had to take my chances and i had to try to game the system in order to win in this process एंड नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट हाउ यू कुड गेम द सिस्टम उसे आप वेल रिसर्च भी कह सकते हो यू कुड रिसर्च आउट द सिस्टम कि सिस्टम में क्या चलता है क्या नहीं चलता यू हैव यू हैव डन योर रिसर्च वेरी वेल सो हाउ डिड यू गेम द सिस्टम एंड वॉट आर द काइंड ऑफ रिसर्च यू डिड जिससे आपको पता चले कि हाँ यार ऐसे स्टूडेंट्स को फाइनेंशियल एड मिलती है ऐसी नहीं मिलती एंड आपने अपनी प्रोफाइल को कैसे वैसा बनाया जिसे जिसे फाइनेंशियल एड एंड स्कॉलरशिप मिलती है टू स्टडी फॉर ऑलमोस्ट फ्री इन अ प्रिस्टीजियस यूनिवर्सिटी लाइक यू पेन Awesome. So the reason I'd say कि मैंने इस प्रोसेस के बारे में रिसर्च करना ही शुरू करा इज बिकॉज ऑफ द अनसर्टनटी इन्वॉल्व इन दिस प्रोसेस बिकॉज देर आर लिटरली थाउजेंड ऑफ एप्लीकेंट्स आउट देर हु आर सुपर क्वालिफाइड टू अटेंड एनी ऑफ दीज इंस्टीट्यूशन सो हाउ डज देन द यूनिवर्सिटी मेक द डिस्टिंगशन बिटवीन हु टू एडमिट एंड हु टू रिजेक्ट दैट वॉज माई फिलोसफी वेन आई स्टार्ट टू रिसर्च अबाउट दिस एंटायर प्रोसेस और जो मैंने कर वो ये था कि मैं यूनिवर्सिटी को ये नहीं बताऊं कि वो क्यों अच्छा है लाइक मोस्ट पीपल डू इन दर वाई एस 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 आई डिसाइड टू टेल यूनिवर्सिटी वाई आई एम द राइट फिट फॉर दैम सो इंस्टेड ऑफ व्यूइंग माय वाई वाई अस एस एज अ वाई यूनिवर्सिटी एस आई व्यूड माय वाई एस एस एज अ वाई मी एस ए टू काइंड ऑफ कन्वे द रीजन वाई आई शुड बी एडमिटेड दिस यूनिवर्सिटी इज बिकॉज द यूनिवर्सिटी एंड आई कैन फॉर्म अ सिम्बियोटिक रिलेशनशिप दट वुड असिस्ट द यूनिवर्सिटी इन द लॉन्गर रन सो स्पेसिफिकली पेन के केस में जैसा मैंने बताया मैं काफी टाइम से डिबेटिंग करते आ रहा हूं तो मैंने पेन की डिबेटिंग हिस्ट्री सर्च करना शुरू करा और जब मैं पेन की डिबेटिंग हिस्ट्री के बारे में पढ़ रहा था आई केम अक्रॉस दिस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पीस ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन मैंने देखा कि सिंस 1982 पेन हैज बीन पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन दिस सुपर प्रेस्टीजियस डिबेटिंग कंपटीशन कॉल्ड द वर्ल्ड यूनिवर्सिटीज डिबेटिंग चैंपियनशिप इट्स अ कंपटीशन दैट्स हेल्ड अमंग ऑल आईवीज इन द यूएस एंड एज यू एज यू माइट नो द आईवीज वुड मेक एवरी एफर्ट पॉसिबल टू मेक श्योर दैट दे स्टे एट द टॉप So Penn has been participating in this competition since the 1980s but was not able to get a prize at this competition. So obviously Penn is trying to make sure that we can win this competition. So what do we do now? Then I present my candidature for this. Then I tell them that hey, I'm a good debater. But here's something that I can do that most other debaters would not be able to do. I can help you win that one competition that you've been wanting to win since a long time. And that is how I kind of created an agreement between the university and myself. I said, look, I I'm here to avail all opportunities and resources I have for me but at the same time let me give you something in return let me give you my debating services that will help us take our university to the apex and that is something that I think worked in my favor so as far as gaming the system or gaming the process is concerned my advice to everybody watching this is to try and research about the one thing the one weakness a university has when it comes to this entire process and try and think about how you can be the jigsaw puzzle that completes this process how you can be somebody that helps the university eliminate this weakness to give you some more examples there might be a university that's struggling at football or a university that's struggling at baseball if you are a baseball player or if you're a football player you can tell them that hey you've been losing at this tournament but once you take me in i can help you win this that is how you game the system that is what i think really helped me out in the end brilliant and that means you must have read so many essays to figure out this formula ki ek gap dhoondo figure out a gap what 
that university hasn't been able to accomplish and kaise aap by getting into the university you are fulfilling or fulfilling the gap to become the best candidate for that university jaise hum job mein agar agar if i can tell an analogy hame bhi aise hi prepare karaya jata hai when we are interviewing for google facebook etc ki yaar aap search karo ki google kaun si nayi technologies pe kaam kar raha hai agar if you are going to that cutting edge jaise blockchain etc you coming to the technology which is new your chances are already higher so it is kind of very very similar so how many essays did you actually read to figure out this formula oh my god countless i i can't even tell you the number of essays that i that i read to just to just to get to this piece of information but one thing that i realized was this that the more number of essays i read the more i can verify the legitimacy of my information so it was very important me, important for me to research as much as i could because i think when it comes to applications a lot of students put in enough effort right they're writing the most amazing essays possible they're crafting their applications in the most amazing ways but one thing that i can do that will separate me from the herd is the amount of research that i can put in you see the internet is a literal ocean of information that we have at our disposals but uh, what really separates us from most people out there is 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 knowing where to dig or where to search for that particular piece of information so that i think really helped me in the end i could streamline the process by understanding that these essays are going to help me and these essays are not so much uh, for my advantage so uh, coming to your question loads of essays but at the end um, it really did count it really did help me a lot brilliant and that also brings me to one more question that aapne itne essays read kiye that also means ki you didn't have to actually hire a counselor ya fir a mentor jo ki lakhs of rupees india mein lete hain it's a, it's a multi crore business in india aur aapko hire karna pada ya nahi karna pada and would you recommend students to take help from any counselor or not yeah so personally i did not take any external services besides what my school already Already had to offer, and this is something that I would suggest to most people out there as well. Because what I think is that this is a, this is an entire marketing strategy that a lot of people use these days. Because they would tell you the good side of things, right? They would tell you that we have sent so many kids to Ivy's, we have sent so many kids to top twenties. But what about the people that they could not send to the Ivy's? What about people who are going to top hundreds, top two hundreds, top three hundred universities? They are intelligent people too. They are people who have achieved their dreams too. But these marketing agencies do not advertise their side of the story so i think that that is an incomplete picture that is something that's biased in the favor of people who they think would be good for their brand and value so as far as that process is concerned i think you're already putting in a lot of effort a lot of time and money into this and if it's it's not guaranteed to yield results so i think getting a counselor only ex- only helps you to a certain extent mm-hmm. beyond that it is of no use so the time effort energy that you're investing into this process you can rather try and make sure that you are seeking help for you you're taking help from resources that are that are absolutely free of cost youtube these days or the internet these days reddit these days there are two especially important forums that I like to uh, that I like to highlight that are available on Reddit one's called R applying to college and one's called R internationals to USA so those are two important forums where you can get all of this information free of cost um when it comes to reviewing your essays you can ask random people who've served as admission officers in the past to review this information for you you can find these people on Reddit you can cold email people emailing i also think is something that's a valuable tool that's available to us that not many of us utilize effectively so using all of these strategies and piecing together things we'll be able to we'll be able to avoid these massive costs when it comes to hiring people to do the job for you so that i think is my perspective about this awesome so that means students can actually save lakhs of money in counselor but they don't know ki wo application fee mein bhi save kar sakte hain so you paid 0 dollars for 19 schools how did you make it possible yeah that's actually true i paid no money at all when applying to this uh, when applying to all of these schools as a part of my application process and the reason i was able to make that possible was because i individually sent an email to all of these schools asking them to waive the application fee for me so i told these schools that hey this 50 60 dollar application fee is probably not that significant an amount for you as it is for me so this is something that you can afford but i cannot so if you give me an opportunity to to completely abandon this fee because it deters me from applying to your school it would be a massive help for me and all of these schools obliged by by giving me the thumbs up sign so that i think is something that all of you can do as well you know because universities are usually very considerate 
it when it comes when it comes to students and understanding their financial needs. So if a certain amount of fee uh, poses a financial burden on your family, I would suggest you email the university individually in order to ask for a waiver that that they would approve in 99% of cases. Additionally, uh, there's a section on the common application where you can select the reasons for which you want a common application fee waiver. So one of those reasons present there is that if you've obtained an SAT or an SAT fee waiver or an ACT fee waiver, you also qualify for a common application fee waiver. So mm-hmm. that's a one website out there, one scholarship organization called that Buddy for Study that works in collaboration with College Board. I've posted information about this on my YouTube channel as well that you can check out. So um, that's something that I that I can use that you can use to your advantage. Why? Because if you've obtained an SAT or an ACT waiver in the past, then you automatically qualify for a common application fee waiver. So it's just one thing to do that can lead to many other things that you can use to your advantage. Brilliant. So students can actually spend zero dollars towards all application fee sat se lekar school applying tak universities applying tak koi paisa khachne ki zarurat nahi hai khachne ki zarurat hai to sirf in the end f1 visa i20 etc mein that is so amazing and overall if you feel comfortable can you share all the schools that you got accepted and kahan kahan par aapko financial aid mili yeah so overall i got accepted to around 10 schools i got accepted to super for competitive schools like Boston University where I got the presidential scholarship I also got accepted to Syracuse Syrac- Kyoto University on a full tuition scholarship Drexel University Stevens Institute of Technology and many more so I I feel all of these schools were really the right fit for me but uh, finally I got accepted to Penn so that was the the most obvious choice for me in the end Yeah Boston University is so hard to get into I mean UPenn is obviously but Boston University I I know I mean it's a dream for so many schools to study business from and you applied to all of these schools for engineering or for law pre law So the reality is that I applied to all of these schools under the undecided major category undecided. because I told them this in explicitly in, in my essays that I wish to go on the pre law track but I'm still uncertain about what I want to pursue during my bachelor's and here is something that not a lot of people know about so the fact is that in order to pursue a law degree in the US you don't necessarily have to major in any one particular major during your bachelor's so uh, unlike india where you have to do an llb degree before an llm degree in the US you can major in practically anything during your bachelor's and then you go to law school to pursue your juris doctor degree so you could essentially major in psychology or or something like computer science or cognitive sciences so that's what i told them that hey i'm not sure about what i want to pursue during the undergraduate process but what i'm sure about is what i want to become in the future so right now i'm just exploring as much as i can and that is something that i wish to do at your school as well explore and that is where i uh, apply to the college of arts and sciences at most institutions because that is usually the one school at all of these institutions that specializes and helps people who are currently undecided about their majors Mm, got it got it perfect now let's transition into the scope of law ki law ek aisa major hai which like indians think ki are wo degree bahut unique hoti hai to the country for example article 21 in india is not the same as article 21 in usa or uk so jo aap law degree lete ho first of all i think that india's law degree is not valid everywhere and same as us so us degree kahan kahan pe valid hai and what is the future of law that a student can think about in the us so that's actually true uh kuch specific universities hi hai us universities hi hai jinko bar council of india recognize karta hai है अराउंड टेन ट्वेल्व यूनिवर्सिटीज ही ऐसी होती है द यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ पेंसिल्वेनिया स्कूल ऑफ लॉ और द कैरी स्कूल ऑफ लॉ इज वन ऑफ दोज यूनिवर्सिटीज अगेन दिस वॉज अगेन अ पार्ट ऑफ माई डिसीजन मेकिंग प्रोसेस कि अगर यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ पेंसिल्वेनिया का लॉ स्कूल इंडिया के बार काउंसिल के द्वारा इट्स कंसिडर्ड दे दे एक्सेप्ट देर लॉ डिग्री देन मे बी इफ आई सब मेट्रिकुलेट दैट इज इफ आई कंप्लीट माई अंडर ग्रेजुएट डिग्री इन थ्री ईयर्स एंड देन गो टू लॉ स्कूल एट थ्री ईयर्स एट पेन इट सेल्फ देन माई डिग्री वुड बी वैलिड इन इंडिया सो द फर्स्ट थिंग गोट टू अंडरस्टैंड इज दैट द यू एस डिग्री इज नॉट valid in most commonwealth nations unlike the uk and india ka case jahan par uk degrees would be valid in india and indian degrees would be valid in the uk so ye jo hai ek bahut bada negative point hai you was law ke against but at the same time kyunki main bachelor's ek different degree mein kar raha hu to i would always have this backup option like say for example if i do my bachelor's degree in computer science and i do my law degree from a us law school then even though i decide to return to india i can use the computer science degree without having to worry about my us degree or us law degree that only applies in the us so that is something that's one of the biggest advantages when it comes to us law schools that there is 
absolutely no prerequisites or any initial conditions that are required for your bachelor's degree before going to a law school for your master's degree so a bachelor's degree ke basis pe aap kahin pe bhi job le sakte ho so did i hear it right it's only 3 years to do like bachelor's degree for you yeah so that happens if i sub matriculate and that is one of the many provisions that upen has so you might know that upen has one of the biggest cases of pre professionalism in all of usa so pre professionalism is where you're already tracking into your masters degree so there's there's a pre med program there's a bio dental program there's a pre law program where you could just complete your undergraduate degree in 3 years instead of 4 and the fourth year would technically be your first year of law school so you don't have to go through the same application process that you did 3 years ago instead you can directly backdoor into the law school or into the med school or into the dental school if you are a part of your pen itself so that is something that i think one of, is one of the biggest advantages that i have as a pen student and most other students as well who are in pre professional universities that is brilliant so 3 years of undergrad or bachelor's degree and then 3 years of law degree or your it can be called a real degree right that you getting that that makes you a lawyer that makes you like a like like a doctor so 3 years of प्री मेड जस्ट लाइक जैसे डॉक्टर बनने के लिए होता है यूएस में तो थ्री ईयर प्री थ्री मेड एंड थ्री ईयर्स ऑफ एक्चुअल मेडिकल डिग्री या तो शॉर्टेस्ट वे यू कैन बिकम वॉट यू वॉन्ट टू दैट इज रियली ब्रिलियंट क्योंकि मैंने जितना भी सुना था कि यूएस में अगर आपको डॉक्टर बनना है एट ईयर्स चाहिए और लॉयर बनना है एट ईयर्स चाहिए दिस इज एक्सेप्शनल वॉट यू पेन इज ऑफरिंग एंड दैट्स वाई इट इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट सिलेक्टिव यूनिवर्सिटी इन यू एस एज वेल Yeah. So now let's talk about your application. What stood out in the crowd to get accepted? I've never done an application to tell you how you stood out and filled the gap. Now, can you please share what were the extracurriculars that actually helped you get in? Yeah, so I actually did a bunch of extracurriculars throughout my high school. I was one of those students who wanted to get his hands in everything that he could. So I, I did everything, right, from academics to debating to quizzing to robotics to sports to music competitions. Basically, everything that I could get my hands. but that one thing that i think i really resonated with and my profile really resonated with was debate i was a part of various national and international level debating competitions even competitions where i represented india um i was also a part of various national level and international level quizzes i in my free time i would write poetry on an online platform called commaful where i had over 4 million reads on my poetry and i was published into magazines alongside that um when it came to my extracurriculars in the stem field i was the winner of the state science bowl two times in a row and we basically developed a robot that was awarded by the mayor a robot that helped tackle the the i would say tackle a major problem that is not talked about enough in india that is the problem of manual scavenging that is when people actually step down in drains to take litter out of uh, out of their drains and that is hazardous towards their health right that is toxic because all of the noxious chemicals that are inhaling are inherently going to um, are inherently going to damage their health and make them uh, and make them prone to various diseases that they can contract in the future so my team and i we developed a robot that could actually do this work for us while saving jobs because actual humans would be controlling these robots so we achieved the health point of view but we at the same time we were also able to avoid the very plausible uh, very plausible problem of unemployment that that you would associate with robots taking over by human beings in specific domains alongside that i was also a badminton level player i pursued badminton for a very long time uh, that was one of the non academic or non extra curricular thing that i did um, i was also involved in math for a very long time so in grade 7 i participated in the, in this uh, international competition called uc maths which you might have heard of it's a mental arithmetic competition where you're supposed to solve 200 questions under 8 minutes so i was able to effectively do that under 6 minutes and that is when i won the title of the international uc maths champion so for this i was awarded a cash prize of rupees 20000 and the trophy was was given to me by none other than the grandmaster mr vishwanath anand at a ceremony hosted and that's just the list of my extra curriculars for you माइंड ब्लोइंग इट्स एक्स्ट्रॉर्डनरी इतनी सारी चीज़ों को मैंने मैंने कभी सुना भी नहीं था लाइक टू हंड्रेड क्वेश्चन इन एट मिनट्स इज स्टिल अन इमेजिनेबल फॉर मी लाइक इवन आफ्टर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर जेई एग्जाम सम आई टी टॉपर्स माइंड नॉट बी एबल टू डू इट बट दिस इज एक्सेप्शनल इट इट शोज द आवर्स एंड आवर्स ऑफ हार्ड वर्क यू डिड इन एवरी सिंगल अपॉर्चुनिटी यू गॉड सो हर अपॉर्चुनिटी वेदर इज एकेडेमिक नॉन एकेडेमिक यू जस्ट यू जस्ट इन टुक इट बट सिक्स मारा आपने हर अपॉर्चुनिटी पे क्या बात है थैंक यू and last can you please share about your stats as well grades maine suna hai us ke liye itna matter nahi karta because people say it's a holistic approach like your profile already spoke about how you got in but 
still let's talk about the, the grades and your SAT and your grades in school. Yeah, so here's the surprising bit. My stats were actually not out of the world stats as it is the case with most UPenn students. So my SAT was actually only a 1480. That was a 760 on the math section and a 720 on the English reading and writing section. Um, in all four years of my high school, I had an average of 95% in 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. But at the same time, that I think that these scores single-handedly do not qualify you for admission at any top university. So I think while my scores and stats did complement my extracurriculars, those were surely not the strongest part of my application. But yet again, this is an example for us to understand that, you know, stats are not the only deal breaker or the deal maker in this case. They're only there to complement the situation. And there are more, they are more or less a checkbox on your application that will make you feel much more confident when it comes to doing well in your extracurriculars and other things that separates you from the crowd. So you think that even if you wouldn't have gotten like 95%, agar aapke close to like 90%, 85% you we you would have been like the same applicant, right? 85 cool. say 95 ka difference thoda zyada hai but i think <laughs> between 90 and 95 would be practically the same thing even sat ke case mein i think a 1500 and 1600 in today's day and age are being viewed in the same light because let's think about it this way ek 1500 or 1600 ke score mein keval do teen galat questions ka hi farak hota hai because when you think about this aap ek applicant ko keval do teen questions galat karne ki ability se agar judge kar rahe hain then that is not the holistic review of that applicant then and, and that is also against the philosophy that most of these schools carry so to, to give you some perspective, I think grades or SAT scores should now be viewed in ranges as opposed to just concrete absolute scores. So instead of saying that a, you should get a 1600 on the SAT to get into the IVs, you can say anything between a 1500 and 1600 is sufficient. Or you should say that instead of getting a 97% of the board examinations, you can say anything above 90% is enough to make you qualify for this process. Other than that, you've got your extracurriculars, you've got your essays that are literal ways of adding voice to your otherwise blunt application so thank you so much Tanish it was pleasure talking to you the things you have shared and have actually added value to my life as well I'm sure students watching in India must be really inspired by your journey and they will be confident how to prepare themselves for a prestigious university like UPenn and the extracurriculars they need to have to get financial aid thank you so much for sharing so for more informative content related to college admission please follow Tanish channel called college obsessed and link will be in the description below thank you so much for watching thank you so much it was a pleasure